Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand. In my most recent video, I talked about three warning skin signs of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a true pandemic. Millions and millions of people have insulin resistance. Most don't know it. It is the precursor to type 2 diabetes. And people can have insulin resistance for many, many years before type 2 diabetes is diagnosed. But the problem is that during that time, insulin resistance is wreaking absolute havoc on your body. So how does anybody know if they have insulin resistance? I'd like to go over some very helpful tests. Firstly, fasting blood glucose level. This is a test which is typically done first thing in the morning. It's better for diagnosing diabetes. It's not always abnormal in people who have insulin resistance, but it can give a good indicator. So the measurements we use in the United States, greater than 126 milligrams per deciliter is considered diabetic range on your fasting blood glucose level. 100 to 126 is considered impaired fasting blood glucose level. And that correlates well with insulin resistance because you want the number to be less than 100, but in many people it will start to creep up with time as they become more insulin resistant. The measurements we use in the United Kingdom, greater than 7 millimoles per litre, is considered diabetic range. The second test that we can use is called an oral glucose tolerance test. And it's a medical test, involves drinking a special drink containing glucose, and you have your blood glucose level measured two hours later. If it's greater than 200 milligrams per deciliter, that is considered diabetic range. If it's 140 to 200, that is considered impaired glucose tolerance, and that correlates well with insulin resistance. And the ideal number should be less than 140 milligrams per deciliter. The third test is called HbA1c. Now I've talked about this in previous videos, glycated hemoglobin. And in many people, the HbA1c test starts to creep up with age. It's a measure of how much glucose is bound to red blood cells, to erythrocytes. And it typically measures blood glucose control over a period of two to three months. So it's much better than a spot glucose check. In most people, when it starts to creep up, it's because of lifestyle reasons and the fact that people start to do things like put on weight with age. But typically, as for the measurements, you want a level less than 5.7, ideally as close to 5 as possible. Less than 5.7 is considered within normal limits. 5.7 to 6.4 is pre-diabetic, which correlates well with insulin resistance, and greater than 6.5 is diabetic range. In the United Kingdom, the measurements we use, less than 42 is considered within normal limits. 42 to 47 is pre-diabetic, so again correlating well with insulin resistance between 42 and 47, and greater than 48 is diabetic range. The final test that I'd really like us to focus on is called HOMA-IR. This stands for Homeostasis Model Assessment of Insulin Resistance. It's an underutilized test and it is obtained by getting your fasting glucose and fasting insulin level. So go to your doctor and ask for those measurements, again typically done first thing in the morning. And in the United States, we use a calculation. We multiply the fasting glucose by fasting insulin and we divide by 405. But I really advise using an online calculator because that can adjust for units, especially in different countries. Now this is a measurement of how hard your body is working to maintain glucose levels. So as you become more insulin resistant, your body is working harder and harder to maintain ideal glucose levels. Remember, glucose is very toxic for your body, so your body works really hard to maintain ideal glucose levels. So as for what a normal level is, there's a lot of debate in the medical community, but generally the HOMA IR, you want it as close to one as possible. As it starts to creep up towards two, that starts to indicate insulin resistance. But the closer it is to one, that means you are insulin sensitive, which means your body is not working really hard to maintain glucose levels. It's secreting the right amount of insulin. So as it creeps up towards two, that is consistent with insulin resistance. But as it goes up even higher, hits three and above, that is consistent with diabetes. HOMA-IR, 
homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance. I really recommend that test for insulin resistance syndrome. Now again, the good news is that insulin resistance is very reversible indeed in most circumstances through the right lifestyle measures Diet, exercise can bring your insulin resistance syndrome into remission. Thanks everybody for listening. Dr. Sunil Dan, do hit the subscribe button down below for more similar videos on my Real Medicine and Health Science channel. And we will speak again very soon.